Hi guys, my name is Saurabh Porwal. Uh, in this series, uh, we were just going through a document containing a list of questions and answers uh, for the interviews. So we did uh, continuous testing, continuous CI, uh, we did uh, on Git and source code management. So let's take this topic of uh, containerization and Docker. So it's a hot topic. I think you will enjoy it and probably refresh some of the questions and answers here. All right. So in continuing with uh, our journey for this document, now a disclaimer, this is not my document. I haven't created it. Uh, in fact, I haven't gone through this document at all. So let's go through this document, see what are the different questions listed and try to come up uh, with uh, our own answers and also the answers written in the document. All right, so the first question, containerization and virtualization, what are containers? So the answer is uh, explain the need of containerization first. So the containers are used to provide consistent computing environment from a developer's laptop to a test environment, from a staging environment into production. Now let's give the definition of containers. Containers consist of an entire runtime environment, an application, its dependencies, libraries, and other binaries, and the configuration files needed to run it, bundled into one package. So everything into one package is... So, and then it says containerizing the application platform and its dependencies, it removes the differences in OS distributions and underlying infrastructure. Now containers, so this is a this is an important picture. So if you just remember it, I think uh, it helps in the answer. So we've got a host OS on top of that, there's container engine or uh, something like Docker engine. Uh, and there on top of it, you've got these containers. So containers, they contain a, uh, an application layer and underlying that there are bins library and libraries uh, which are the part of the containers so i think that's what is explained in above as well what are the advantages that containerization provides over virtualization uh, so it lists four different advantages so containers provide real-time provisioning and scalability uh, but whereas vm provides slow provisioning containers are lightweight when compared to vms VMs have a limited performance when compared to containers and containers have a better uh, resource utilization compared to VMs. So, yeah, so that's true. So all four are, four are good. How exactly are containers different from hypervisors? So, all right. So we've got a list of hypervisor virtualization and container differences. So the first one is your default security support. So the question was, how exactly are containers different from hypervisor virtualization? So default security support, a hypervisor goes to a great degree, containers to a slightly lesser degree. Memory, uh, it got hypervisor has got the complete OS, uh, whereas containers have the app requirement only, so containers are lightweight. Time taken to start is substantially longer in a hypervisor. Uh, it's very short in container. Hypervisors are not really portable too much, so it requires a lot of preparation, but containers are very, very highly portable in any format uh, within the image. And operating system has its own OS and uh, containers use the, the host OS. So five differences comparing to Docker and a VM. All right, so this is, a, this is a good question. Uh, I think it's often uh, asked, what is a Docker image? What does it contain? So Docker, image, Docker images are used to create containers. The images are created with the build command and they will produce a container when started with run. Images are stored in a Docker registry such as registry.hub.docker.com because they can become quite large. So yeah, so this is a, is a free repository available. Uh, it's a public repository and images are designed to be composed of layers of other images, allowing a minimal amount of data to be sent when transferring images over the network. So that's Docker image. <clears throat> the next question is, uh, what is a Docker container? So Docker container, uh, so I think that this is, this is one of the most commonly asked questions uh, in a Docker based interview. So let's see what it writes. So Docker containers include the application, all its dependencies, but share the kernel with other containers running as isolated process in user space. Docker containers are not tied to any specific infrastructure. They run on computers, not on any infrastructure and in any cloud. 
Now explain how to create a Docker container. Docker containers can be created by either creating a Docker image and then running it, or you can use Docker images that are present on the Docker Hub. So Docker containers are basically, they are all the runtime instances of Docker images. What is a Docker Hub? Docker Hub is a cloud-based registry service, which allows you to link to the code repositories, build your own Im images, test them, store and manually push the images. Uh, now, once you have pushed the image, if it's a public repository, I think it can be utilized by the other people as well. So it provides a centralized resource for container image discovery, distribution and change management, user and team collaboration, and workflow automation throughout the development pipeline. Yeah, so it's it's a public repository for the Docker images. How is Docker different from other container technologies? Oh, well, Docker is probably one of the only technologies in this space, so I haven't seen anything else being used. So Docker containers are easy to deploy in cloud. It can get more applications running on the same hardware than other technologies, making it easier for developers to quickly create ready to run containerized applications and makes managing and deploying applications much easier. What is a Docker Swarm? So Docker Swarm, it's a native clustering for Docker, which turns a pool of Docker hosts into a single virtual Docker host. Docker Swarm serves as a standard Docker API. Any tool that already communicates with the Docker daemon can use Swarm. Uh, I haven't seen many people using Docker Swarm now because we already got Kubernetes now. So yeah, it's probably outdated nowadays. Okay, the next question, what is Dockerfile used for? Dockerfile can be used to build the images automatically by reading the instructions. Sorry, Docker can be used to build images by reading the instructions from a Docker file, which is correct. Uh, give a small definition of a Docker file. It's a text document that contains all the commands a user could call on the command line to assemble an image. Using Docker build, users can create an automated build that executes several command line instructions in succession. Yeah, so I think you, there, are, there are lots of commands within a Docker file as well. So you just use the first command, probably it's either you use your OS like an Ubuntu, you add your applications, you open up the port, you create an environment. Uh, command lines in it, so uh, yeah, the standard uh, Docker file instructions. Can I use JSON instead of YAML for my compose file in Docker? Yes, you can use JSON. Yeah, that's not a problem at all. Tell us how you have used Docker in your past position. So explain how you have scripted Docker and used Docker with other tools like Puppet, Chef, Jenkins, Ansible. If you have no past, past practical experience in Docker or, or have past experience with other tools in similar space, be honest and explain the same. But why would you not use Docker? So you, Docker is free. You can just play around with it. Just get some exposure, guys. Yeah, I would say that anybody who is going for a Docker interview must have played around with Docker. How to create a Docker container? Yeah, so Docker run hyphen T. So that, that will create a Docker container. Uh, you can use Docker PS to actually look at all the different containers that are running. How do you stop and start a Docker container? Docker stop command and the Docker restart. How far do Docker containers scale? Oh, they go to hundreds, thousands, or even millions of containers. A whole Google and Twitter uh, yeah, they're all running on Docker containers. So the, even the YouTube is running on Docker containers. There are millions and millions of containers which are, are created and destroyed every day. So yeah, and the advan advantage is the scalability of it. What platforms does Docker run on? So Docker runs on only Linux and cloud platforms. Yeah, Docker, Docker has, uh, it just uh, uses uh, Linux. So these are all the different flavors of Linux. And on cloud, so you've got uh, AWS, GCP, and Azure. Oh, I would work on Rackspace. Note that Docker does not run on Windows or Mac. 
uh, or Mac. Yeah, you, you can, you can, it, it will use its operating system, uh, but uh, the basic uh, OS will still be among any of these. Do I lose my data when the Docker container exists? The answer is no. I won't lose my data when the Docker container exists. Any data that your application writes to disk gets preserved in the container until you explicitly delete the container. I, I don't think this is completely true. So if uh, if you need to actually, so there's something called as your uh, claim volume. So you need to have persistent volume attached to a Docker container, then you will not use it. But if you're writing, uh, you know, if you're writing just within the container itself to some file, yeah, it will perish. All right, so this document contains some more questions. Uh, how does HTTP work? All right, so let's, let's look at what these questions are. So how does HTTP work? And then I'm just keen on like both soft SDLC and technical operations, discuss your experience building bridges between IT ops types of testing uh they, now we're deviating from the, the docker's stuff and the containerization all right guys so these are the common list of questions that uh, that are asked i think there are a few more questions which are missing in the document but uh, yeah we're just trying to review the document and see uh, where our knowledge stands so all good cool all right thanks guys thanks for your time today and i'll see you in the next one